Hello everyone, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today we are going to talk about a case study with a DMAC approach. So in one of the MNCs, the part data is maintained by the third party vendor. So there are parts which are to be procured and their data has been maintained by the third party vendor. The vendor was doing errors while they were maintaining data. So that was causing serious concerns when the parts were ordered by the company. Some wrong parts were ordered, some parts which are not needed were ordered because of the wrong data. The third party was only maintaining 85% correct data. For that, the company assigned a team led by a black belt to solve this problem. So that is how the project got started. If you look at the voice of the customer and voice of the business, voice of the customer says that they need the products on time with no errors or with no defects. The critical customer issue was that they were receiving products late and the critical customer requirement was that they want to reduce this delivery turnaround time. So that was the overall issue from the customer end and when they analyzed the problem of delivering the late parts or delivering the late components to the customers, they figured out that it is happening because some of the parts they are ordering are incorrectly ordered and that is why this issue is rising. That is why there is delay in the production and that is how they are delaying the overall customer's products. So critical to quality in this particular case is to increase the parts data accuracy from 85% to 99.9%. Similarly, when they heard the voice of the business, this business also said that the part data is inaccurate. What is the issue with the business? If this data is inaccurate, they are ordering wrong parts and it is taking more time for the end customer's products to be first created and then shipped. So the overall shipment is delayed. And what is critical to business? The critical to business is that this rate should, accuracy rate should increase the CTP becomes that they want to increase the data accuracy from 85% to 99.9%. When both CTQ and CTP they are same, the project is picked up. So the team created the project charter. The project charter has six elements. The number one is business case. In business case, we define what is the business that we are trying to work on and what, uh, what is the problem, what is the extent of the problem and what happens if we don't solve this problem, what is the impact. The second one is the problem statement. The problem statement should always be with data. So when they measured the data for last six months, they figured out that the accuracy level is only at 85% and the goal statement should be smart. A smart goal statement is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound to increase the parts data accuracy maintained by the third party vendors from 85% to 99.9% by June 2017 becomes a smart goal statement. Then we define the scope. The scope was the third party vendor that is in scope and all the other processes were out of the scope. The project milestones should also be defined. It is a DMAC project, so define, measure, analyze, improve, and control dates should approximate dates should be defined. And the team charter should consist of the sponsor, champion, mentor, process owner, and the team members. The sponsor is the one who is sponsoring this initiative. Uh, the person who has the right to approve the cost or to approve the resources and everything. Champion is the one who is assigned this problem like AVP purchase in this case is a champion. Mentor is the one who is going to mentor this uh, black belt on this project. So the person black belt is working for the champion to solve this problem. Then the team defined the high level process map in the form of COPIS in which they said C stands for customer, O stands for output, P is the process, I is the input and S is supplier. They wanted to define this because they wanted to define the scope of the overall project. So COPIS helped them define the scope of the project and it also helps the higher management to understand what is the process that the team is going to improve or work upon. If you look at this, the customer is the engineer, the output is the correct part data and the input to this is the new part that are to be processed is the input, the name of the part and the other details. Who is the supplier of this information? The engineers itself. So engineers are the supplier of the information and engineers are the customers themselves. The process is the, a list is created for the parts used in the new products. And then that list is sent to the vendor to maintain that data. And then the vendor search that part and information on the manufacturer's sites. 
and that part is located and the data is captured the report is created and then the report is sent to the business so overall this is the process flow which we need to improve the next thing the team did was to create a fish pond diagram they got together into a room and identified the various root causes to this particular problem which is low accuracy rate in this case and they said under process no process documentation manual processes multiple process steps were involved under machine they said no central requisition in the system there are old browsers which are used the procedure is they work in day and night shift different business units are there too many procedures to be followed is something under process procedure under mother nature they say day of the week could be an issue or day of the month could be an issue uh, under people they had knowledge gap they had tenure issue and they had uh, processor or associate themselves as issues because in a team there could be some associates which are creating this problem so that is why they have taken that as one of the potential access the next thing that the team did was to identify the process capability so total unmatched attributes out of 200 checked 30 were unmatched and opportunities per unit becomes one so they put out or they calculated the process sigma the process sigma came out to be 2.53 sigma so i can take you to excel and show you how this is done friends you can buy my authored books on amazon my first book is eight steps to problem solving which talks about six sigma concepts and my second book is continuous improvement the lean way which talks about the lean concepts so in order to calculate the process sigma the unmatched attributes are 30 and the total is 200 the formula is equal to norm sinv 1 minus total defects divided by total opportunities bracket close plus 1.5 so it is 2.53 sigma as it is shown in the ppt post that the team collected data and once the data was collected all these uh, potential axes were tested with the help of chi square test because the project y is discrete and the axes which were on which the data was collected were also discrete so chi square test was done so let me take you to minitab and show you how these chi square tests are done so i have this data in minitab in column c 1 t i have part data which is actually your project y which is stored in the form of incorrect or correct part data then we have the browser whether it is old or a new browser which is the potential x then we have engineer as again potential x engineer 1 2 3 engineer 1 2 7 and then we have process steps in this process how many process steps were there then we had documented process yes or no and then we have data value source is new or old so let's try chi square test on these for that you will go to stat tables and chi square test for association in rows you will enter part data and in the columns you will enter the browser and click ok so the first x which is browser is being tested the p value of this test is less than 0.05 which indicates that it is a significant x and when we say it is a significant x 5.85 is the expected value which should be incorrect when we use old browser but there are 26 values which are coming as incorrect so old browser is creating an issue that is what has to be addressed in the solutions let's go to the next x and test the next x is engineer if we have to use chi square test again we can use control e to reach the previously used command in minitab so under columns we will select engineer and we will click ok the p value again is zero it indicates that engineer is also a significant x incorrect expected values for engineers are given below which is 3.9 in this case and they are doing 12 errors so engineer 2 is making more errors engineer 3 is also making more than expected errors 3.15 is the expected number they are making six errors and here also 
engineer one is making more than expected errors 2.7 is expected they are making four errors the rest of the engineers are performing okay let's test the next x which is process steps so i'll press ctrl e again under rows i will keep the part data and under columns i will now change this to process steps and click ok you look at this the p-value again is zero it means it is also a significant x so the number of process steps where we have more number of process steps for example six seven and eight we have incorrect values expected values are three but they are nine expected value is 2.8 when the process steps are seven they are making nine errors 2.4 and they are making six errors when the process steps are eight so it indicates that when we have to process more process steps manually the team is bound to make more errors let's test the next x Control e columns we will change this to process documentation and click ok the p value of this test is greater than 0.05 it means process documentation is not a significant x whether the process is documented or not documented is not impacting the overall accuracy let's test the next x which is data value source so in columns we will enter the data value source in rows we will keep the part data and we will click ok the p value is zero it means this is again a significant x when we have the old data value source we were expected 5.7 errors incorrect data but we are having 28 it means the old value data source is creating more errors friends you can buy my authored books on amazon my first book is eight steps to problem solving which talks about six sigma concepts and my second book is continuous improvement the lean way which talks about the lean concepts so let's go back to our slides and see what solutions we have identified for browser engineer process steps and data value source so this is the list of significant x's and a solution has been identified for example browser was one of the significant x's so they changed the browser to the latest browser for their vendors and engineer was the second significant x so they trained the vendor engineers on the standard documented processes the process steps multiple process steps or number of process steps was another issue so they simplified the process steps and automated the processes using rpa robotic process automation and data value source was one of the challenges so they changed the data value source to the latest available by the suppliers and the manufacturers and they controlled this particular process by putting a process around this as well whenever there is a change at the supplier or the manufacturer database they will send the update to the vendors when the solutions were implemented the project was enhanced the overall accuracy got to 99.9 percent i will show you that in in a second in the form of a control chart so they avoided losses of $300k. It was happening due to unnecessary transportation and labor cost. The team was also able to reduce the delay to zero days for end customers products, which they were shipping late earlier. So that is how the overall impact got created. So let me take you to Minitab once again and show you how the control chart is created and what is the result of that control chart. In the mini tab, I have copied data to create the control chart. So I will create a P chart because my data is discrete and we are measuring the defective units. So total incorrect units are mentioned here and total inspected units are mentioned in column C9 and the status of that is mentioned in the column C10, whether it is before the project or after the project. So they are stacked. So before project data and after project data are stacked. Before project data is pasted first and below that we have after project data. So how to create a P chart using this? We will go to stat, control charts, attribute charts and P chart. Under variables, I will enter the column C8 which is incorrect under subgroup size i will enter total inspected and in the p chart option i will go and enter in stages column c10 which is 
status and I will click OK and OK. So this is the P chart. You can see 15% uh, was the earlier error rate which has now reduced to less than 0.01% which is 0 0.0083. In terms of percentage, if we look at it, it is 0.83%. So the error rate has significantly gone down from 15% to less than 1%. So friends, I hope you really like this video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. I will see you in my next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.